Welcome to SLAM TV. Today, we're going to talk about types of data. Types of data is important to study because when you take statistics, you learn a variety of statistical techniques. In order to know which technique you want to apply, you need to know which type of data you have. Luckily for you folks, we have a special guest here to join us to teach us about types of data. He's known as the Sultan of Stats, the Daddy of Data. He's three standard deviations above the mean. He's a statistical outlier. He's Professor Jay Cho. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your lovely introduction. Well, Jay, you know, you're uh, known across the land as being a stats expert, and I'm glad you're here to help us with types of data. Well, actually, my main reason for being here today is to uh, try to get you a perfect date. Um, what does a perfect date have to do with types of data? Wait, before we do anything, let me just ask you one question. Are you currently dating anyone? Uh, no. Well, that's why I, last night I spent like countless hours trying to find a perfect date for you. I was looking at all these different online dating sites. There are so many people out there. There's so much data there. So I figured, wow, we can actually use this data to teach our students about different types of data. And meanwhile, I think I found somebody that you might like. Oh, really? Who yes. is this? Would you like person? to see? Uh, would you like to see the picture of her? Yeah. yeah. May I present Jenny L. Ooh, she's pretty hot. Uh, maybe I should look into this online dating. Oh, awesome. Great. I brought my iPad. I think we're going to have to fill out your profile right now to get your perfect date. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Maybe we should uh, talk to the students about the different types of data we have first. All right. So tell me more about different types of data. Well, there's broadly two main types of data. One type is what we call quantitative data, and the other type is what we call qualitative data. So, okay, quantitative and qualitative. Tell me uh, the more about quantitative data. Quantitative data, if you look at the word quantitative, the first, four, the first five letters are quant, Q-U-A-N-T. That's the same root as the word quantity. So you're trying to measure the amounts of things. So quantitative data measures the amount of things. Right, quantity, like how many or how much. Okay. Right, usually it involves numbers and stuff. Right. How about the, the other type of qualitative data? Tell me something more about qualitative data. Well, when you look at the word qualitative and you look at the first four letters, Q-U-A-L, uh, that's the root, same root as the word quality. And if you think about quality, quality, you're measuring a characteristic, a description. So qualitative data is more describing something, but not really measuring the amount of something with numbers. Right. Quality. Quality as in like qualities you look for in perfect date, for example. Exactly. Right. So you're saying quantitative data is quantity, like measuring how many or how much or counting, and then qualitative as in describing the property of certain things. That's right. All right. Good. I think we are ready to answer some questions, huh? <sighs> okay. All right. So these are the, uh, these are the uh, questions about what you're looking for okay. in your perfect date. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Awesome. Awesome. Question number one, occupation. Well, occupation is qualitative data because you're describing what a person does. You're not measuring the amount of anything. You're more describing a quality. All right. So what occupation are you looking for? Doctors, lawyers, teachers? Well, to be honest, I'm tired of working. I would like to date someone who's rich. You know, I don't have to support her. I, I want her to support me. I, I want, you know, someone that can, you know, fund the lifestyle with which I've grown accustomed to. Alrighty. You're ready for the next question. The next question is the hair color. Jay, that's so superficial. Come on, answer, just answer the question. Well, hair color is another example of qualitative data. The reason why is because you're describing the quality of the hair. Color is a quality of hair. You're not measuring the amount of anything, like the length or anything like that. So it's actually qualitative data. Right. So you like blonde, brunette, what is it? <sighs> you're so superficial, dude. I don't care if they're blonde, brunette, purple, anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Next question. Um, the height. Another superficial question. Come on, height. What is it? Height is quantitative data. Quantitative data because you're measuring the amount of something. In this case, you're measuring the vertical height of someone, so that would be quantitative. So do you like short, tall, medium height? Why do you say you short like? first? 
because you know whatever no particular reason <laughs> i'm not the tallest guy no taller than five five i would say da, 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 da. all right next question pets Pets are qualitative data as well, because cats, dogs, you're not measuring the amount of something. You're also describing a quality. What type of animal do you like? You like dog, cats, whatever. Right. Is that it? Like, so what, what kind of pets do you like? I don't really like these domesticated animals. You know, I like something a little bit more wild, like a dog, you know, something wild, something fierce. Already, already, already. I think we have one more question to go. I think this question is very, very, very important. I you hope have it's a good to answer question. this question. You have to answer this question. Oh, your other questions this are like super lame. All right, the last question is the shoe size. Are you serious? Yes, shoe size is very important. Shoe size? Uh-huh. I'm not answering this question. This is dumb. Come on, you have to answer this. You know, you know what? Shoe size is actually a great example for the next thing that we want to talk about. We have already talked about qualitative <coughs> versus quantitative data. Quantitative data splits into two more types, discrete data and continuous data. Wow, discrete and continuous. OK, so tell me something about discrete data set. Well, discrete data is, you know, when you have discrete data, it's qu still quantitative, but you know, the, the data is separated in some sense. Discrete data, you can count the data with your fingers. Now, you might not have enough fingers, but if you had sort of an infinite number of fingers, you could sort of count. So, so like my shoe, I wear eight and a half, even though it should be like eight and three quarter, but I have eight and a half. So is that, is that discrete data? Shoe size is, uh, you know, the great example of discrete data. And the reason why is because if you think about it, you know, shoe sizes come in fixed sizes, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. They're separated. Uh, I can count all the different shoe sizes on my fingers. So mm. that would be a good example of discrete data. I get it, I get it. So yeah, tell me about continuous data set then. Well, continuous is different from discrete. In discrete, you know, each value has some separation or some gap. So when you were talking about shoe size, that was a good example because, uh, you know, you have seven and a half, you have eight. Uh, continuous, when you have a continuous data set, if you have two pieces of data within the data set, actually any value in between those two is uh, possible. So a good example would be, you know, foot size. Like while we have different shoes, discrete mm. shoe sizes, the foot length is actually continuous data. And if we wanted to create a shoe that actually fit each and every single person, we need an infinite number of shoes. So no one's gonna make an infinite number of shoes and that's why we need discrete um, shoe sizes. Right, so you're saying that discrete data set, you have only so many, and we can point to the finger, we can count with our fingers, yeah. and continuous, you have two values, and anything in between those two is possible. That's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Jim. Awesome, awesome. Now let's get to the real business of finding your real perfect date. All so right. back here, now these are questions about yourself. Okay. So you gotta be honest, no lying. I'm All ready. right, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, the first question about yourself, your weight. My weight? Yes, your weight. Uh, do I have to say it out loud? Yes. 139. Oh, so weight is a discrete data. No, weight is not discrete. When you look at weight, you're measuring something, so it definitely it's uh, quantitative data. But any real weight is possible. We usually round to the nearest pound, but you just need a more precise scale. A more precise scale will be able to distinguish between the subtle differences between different people's weights. So weight is actually continuous data. Alrighty. Second question: number of past exp uh, number of past relationships. Number of past relationships. Let me count here. There's. Wait, is it continuous or discrete? Before you answer the question. Oh. The number of relationships that you've been in is definitely discrete. The reason why is you can't have one seventh of a relationship. You're either in a relationship or you're not, and you're counting, and they're, you know, no, you can't date, you can't have one seventh of a relationship. Right, so how many, uh, how many do you have? Let's see. 
Mm. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> Three. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think I have the final question, which is Good. obviously the most important question. All right. The question is, did you cry during the movie The Notebook? That's not even a discrete versus continuous question because did I cry or not? That's qualitative data, dude. Come on, I know you cried. So I guess, okay, so what I mean to say is how much did you cry? Even when you ask me how much did I cry, that's still not a very clear question because, you know, are you talking about the amount of liquid that may or may not have exited my right. eyes okay, during the movie? That's kind of gross. Because that, be, that would be continuous data if you're measuring the amount, right. like the so volume. We're not, we're not measuring that. Uh, I guess my question is how many times did you cry then? Well, the number of times I cried would be discrete data. And the reason why is because, you know, you cried not at all, <laughs> or once, or twice, or three times, but you don't say you cried 1.7 times. In my case, maybe I cried once, kind of started at the beginning, and cried all the way through till the credits. I know, I know. I cried too. I cried too. I Come on, everyone you. cries in the notebook. I hear you. All right, I think that wraps it up. Yes. And uh, let me just uh, wrap this up here. And then I think we have it. All right. I think we have the winner. Is she hot? Yeah. Does she have a good personality? Definitely. Is she fiery? Definitely. Is she adventurous? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes. I love that. All right, let me, uh, let me present you the Lumpy Lusciousness. Lumpy Space Princess. <laughs> I'm gonna fall in love with one of those little guys, and then I'm gonna fall out of love, and then I'm gonna totally fake die. All right, all right. Sorry, Roger. Sorry, Roger. Sorry about the uh, lumpy lusciousness didn't work out, but I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up. How about let's play the dating game? Dating game. Yeah, dating game. I have a better idea. Let's play the data game. <laughs> data game is a game where a piece of data is displayed, and then Jay and I have to choose amongst three options. Qualitative data, discrete data, or continuous data. Why don't you play along with us at home? Announcer, let's get started. The distance from Hogwarts to London. Continuous. Oh, we both got the same thing, buddy. Of why? Course, of course. Yes. Why, can you explain why you uh, got continuous? All right, it's definitely continuous because you're talking about distance. Uh -huh. Distance can be, you know, 10 miles or 11 miles, but it can be really Anything between 10 and 11, there is no gap, there is no break, could be anything. So that's why it's continuous. I agree. Of course, Hogwarts is 600 miles away from London, not 11 or 12 or whatever. Oh, Anyways. Well, the map, they look so close. Next one, next one. Restaurant user ratings. We agree again. Discreet. Definitely discreet. Why? Because you're going to Yelp or any other restaurant review site, you give them stars. Right. You can even give them one, two, three, four stars. There's no three and a half and three and three quarters of star. You can't give them like quarter of a star. I can't give pie stars. You can't give pie stars either. So definitely there's a gap and there's only a finite number of stars. That's why it's discreet. Oh, cool. All right. Next one, announcer. Political party. Oh, this one's easy. Hmm, interesting. Easy, easy, easy. I got this in the bag. This one's obviously qualitative data, right? Definitely, definitely. We are not talking about numbers. We are just describing the uh, type of parties you guys belong to. So it's definitely uh, qualitative data. Do you agree with that? I agree. I think that was an easy one. Are you one. still Republican? I think that was an easy one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Answer? Amount of Red Bull you can drink in 30 seconds. Wow, really? You think it's discreet? What do you think is discreet? Ah, 
I was thinking, you know, Red Bull, I could drink, you know, I could buy one can of Red Bull, I could buy two cans of Red Bull, I could buy three cans of Red Bull, so, you know, it seems like it's discreet. However, well, I say it's continuous because you can buy two Red Bulls, but you can drink a little bit more. So you buy three cans, but you don't have to drink the all three cans. You can just partially drink it, so it can uh. be either somewhere between two and three cans. Right, so right, 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 right. I right, think right. in this case, if the question was asking how many bottles do you buy, mm -hmm. then I think it's definitely discreet. But here we're talking about how, how much Red Bull you can you actually drink. So it could be anywhere between two and three or one and two. So in this case, this is continuous. All right, yeah, I agree, I agree. Right, right. And answer, we have another? A credit card number. Huh? Huh? Wait. What? Hey, you must be wrong here. You must be wrong because qual qualitative data, I mean, it's got numbers, dude, so it must be quantitative data. Actually, Roger, I'm going to have to say, even though they have numbers, you're describing the credit card. The numbers don't really mean anything. You're describing, it's like a name. It's like a name on your credit card. So it's definitely qualitative. Yeah, you you're right, you're right. I, I agree. I mean, I thought anything with numbers would be quantitative data. Yeah, but this, is, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Right, because sometimes numbers can be describing something without measuring something, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Hmm. This one I got. All right. Minimum 2.4 college GPA for a scholarship. All right. Wow, discreet. Oh, we both got discreet. Right. Why did you think it was discreet? Because, Roger, when you take a class, you get your letter grade, A, B, C, D, or F. That means you're getting your points, four, three, two, one, or zero. So that's your discrete data set right there. I think in order for students to really understand why this example is discrete, they would actually need to understand how grade point average is calculated. Mm -hmm. Luckily for our students, we teach them that in this course. Perfect. Now okay. I can calculate my GPA. Even though you both got the question right, there can only be one winner and one loser. Congratulations, J. Cho. You're our data game winner.